Hi class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this video, we're gonna start a series of examples um, that pertain to integration by parts. And in this particular video, we're gonna focus on just introducing the by parts sort of formula, and then we'll get to the examples in the other videos. So first, I'm gonna draw your attention to the product rule. So if you remember when you were taking the derivative of two functions that were being multiplied together, we had a rule that allowed us to find that derivative of that product. And the rule was take the derivative of the first function multiplied by the second function. So f prime of x times g of x plus now take the first function f of x and multiply it by the derivative of the second function. So g prime of x. So that was the product rule. The idea here is that we need to be able to integrate things that back in the day had been found to have a derivative using the product rule. So how do we undo that process and find the antiderivative of something that was a product rule from the beginning? So what I want you to do and think about is, let's just integrate both sides of this equation. Let's find the antiderivative of this equation. So we have now the integral of the left side here, which is our product of f of x times g of x. And we're gonna have the derivative there. Of course, we are going to be finding the integral relative to or with respect to the x. So we need dx here. And let's do the same thing to the right-hand side where we integrate technically on all of this stuff here on the right-hand side. So we have the integral of f prime of x g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. And then of course, we need to tell the world that we are integrating with respect to x, so we have our dx here. Now this integral symbol goes with both of these pieces. So let me put this in, in brackets. So it's very clear that we are integrating this whole thing and that's important because in my next step, I'm going to actually distribute my integration symbol. So let's check that out. First of all, on the left-hand side, when I integrate something that I was taking the derivative of originally, well, those two processes undo each other and what falls out is merely my product, f of x times my g of x, okay? On the right-hand side, as I mentioned, let's go ahead and distribute, if you will, that integral symbol on this first um, expression that's here, f prime of x, g of x, and also on the second expression, f of x, g prime of x. So that would look like the integral of f prime of x, g of x, of course, dx, so that we know we're integrating with respect to x, plus the integral of the second part, f of x times g prime of x dx. And we're allowed to do that because of properties of integration essentially allow us, much in the same way that we could actually take the derivative of pieces, we can do the same here with taking the integral of these two pieces. Okay, so now we've got this expression and um, the sort of the clever magical thing that we will do here is let's actually take this piece over here, the right hand side, where we have the, just the integral of f of x g prime of x dx and let's solve for that piece alone. Now, truth be told, I could have solved for this piece if I wanted to. Right now, this equation is solved for this piece right here, but I'm gonna cleverly choose to solve for this piece, all right? So what that means that we need to do is we need to actually subtract this integral and its integrand over to the other side. So if I, if I do that, I literally can say, subtract the integral f prime of x, g of x, dx, and I will do that to both sides, totally allowed. We can manipulate the integral expressions much in the same way that you can uh, take and manipulate any other type of equation components. So this piece and this piece are no longer on the right-hand side. What I now have on the left-hand side is this f of x times g of x, but then I have to subtract off this integral of f prime of x, g of x, dx. 
and that will now be equal to this piece that I cleverly wanted by itself, the integral of f of x g prime of x dx. Okay. Well, I know it's hard to imagine, but I'm going to box this for now because this is going to be a version of the formula that we will use to actually find an integral of something that is by parts. Let me actually, though, notate all the parts that we want things to be in because this is such a kind of a lengthy process here. We tend to kind of exchange out, if you will, all the f of x's and f prime of x's and g of x's and g prime of x's for just single letters. So let's do this just before um, we get going on some examples. Let's actually let over here, let's let our f of x be just u. Let's just call it u. And by the way, u is just sort of this standard kind of placeholder, if you will, of a letter that we use when we want to sub things out. This is not the same u as like u substitution that we just learned. But for right now, let's let f of x be u. And that means over here, this f of x is also the same u. And here, when I see I have f prime of x, that's technically a u prime. Okay, I'm just simplifying my notation is all I'm doing here so that I don't have all of this function notation kind of messing things up in terms of my formula. You could certainly leave it if you wanted, but here's a technique to kind of simplify things a bit. Now, I also have g of x's. So let's let g of x be a different letter. Instead of u, let's go to the next letter in the alphabet. How about v? I have a g of x there, and I have another g of x over here. So we'll call that also v. And down here, I have a g prime of x. Let's call that v prime. Okay, so what we have here with all of these u's and v's and u primes and v's is a way to simplify our by parts formula so that we can write it in this way. We can now say, and I'm gonna start with this side, we have the integral of u times v prime. So I'm gonna write here the integral of u times v prime, still the dx though, because we're gonna be integrating relative to or with respect to the x, but I'll temporarily think in terms of u's and v's, and you'll see in my examples why that would make sense. And that will be equal to, let's have this left side here. This would be no integral symbol is attached here. So this is just a u times v. So u times my v minus the integral of u prime times v times my dx. And this is how we're gonna think about the biparts formula, really helping us drive how we integrate a integrand that was actually from the product rule initially, okay? So my next videos, you'll actually see some examples of this biparts formula utilized and how the U's and the V's kind of come into play to help us figure out what that integral is. So I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.